Good afternoon. My name is uh, Bill Richards. I'm uh, one of the moderators for the session, Icons and Surgery One. Uh, together with my co-moderators, Dr. Steve Schweitzberg is here. We have two great icons to be honored uh, today, and we fully expect that all of you will get up and uh, make comments about the uh, icons for them to you know, respond, and we'll record those uh, comments by uh, video and audio to be displayed later. So this is really all about the icons, and I'd like our first champion, Dr. Eric Elster, to come up and introduce our first icon. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank the college and the committee for the honor and privilege of introducing uh, the first icon. A little earlier this morning, I had the opportunity to give the Churchill lecture. Uh, and Dr. Churchill was an icon who came out of World War II, who was a military surgeon, an educator, and an innovator. And Dr. Rich is made from exactly the same mold. I've known Dr. Rich for pretty much my entire professional career. And he's uh, been a mentor uh, and really kind of gave me the right glide path to follow. And what I've learned from Dr. Rich is the concept of reaching behind you and pulling that person behind you forward and truly being a selfless mentor. And I think you'll see, it, you'll see that in the video that we put together to honor Dr. Rich. With that, can we start the video? In August 1964, two North Vietnamese ships attacked a U.S. naval warship in international waters. Congress passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which allowed President Johnson to increase America's involvement. Thousands of American troops flowed into South Vietnam. In 1965, one of the Army officers assigned to Vietnam was Norman Rich, who had just finished his surgical residency. Norman Rich was born in Ray, Arizona, 1934. Riding free-range burrows in the high Sonoran Desert was a major pastime for him growing up. In austere times, there was no cost, and the burrows ate the grass around his home. At age 16, as an Eagle Scout, he went on a six-week train trip to the 1950 World Jamboree in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. During summers in Ray, Norman spent his days working in the open pit copper mine as a diamond drill operator and assistant electric shovel operator. One of his great aspirations in life was to attend Stanford University and become a doctor. Dr. Rich attended the University of Arizona for his first two years of college and then transferred to Stanford, graduating in 1956. He matriculated at Stanford University Medical School, graduating in 1960. I did uh, volunteer for the Army. I went to Tripler uh, as an intern and was offered the opportunity to go back to Letterman and the Presidio of San Francisco as a general surgery resident, which I gladly accepted because so many of my uh, favorite professors from Stanford were in San Francisco. They did not go to Palo Alto. And I also had the benefit of many mentors from the University of California, San Francisco. So people like Carlton Matheson and uh, Emil Holman and uh, Dr. J. Engelbert Dunphy, uh, Dr. Bill Siland uh, uh, were uh, teachers and I really benefited from that very much. We were put on the Simon Bolivar Buckner, which was a World War II troop ship, along with the 93rd Evacuation Hospital and a number of uh, engineering units, so that we had over 500 personnel on that ship, spending essentially 30 days on the Pacific Ocean, all expenses paid, of course. <laughs> The uh, Second Surgical Hospital Mobile Army, or MASH, uh, was essentially what Dr. DeBakey and others had created at the end of World War II uh, 
uh, from the Surgeon General's office. Uh, I don't remember exactly, and our numbers did change uh, periodically, but we had uh, approximately 22 doctors and nurses and 88 enlisted men uh, making up the component. The second surgical MASH unit was assigned to the 1st Air Cavalry Division, consisting of 500 helicopters and thousands of men in the highlands of Vietnam. The defoliant Agent Orange was used to clear the three canopy jungle in An Khe, where the camp was located. There, Dr. Rich first encountered the wartime need for contingency. Our hospital unit had been placed on ships through the Panama Canal, so our hospital uh, was uh, about six weeks behind us. Heat and humidity both uh, at the 100 degree mark uh, inside a tent with a kerosene lantern. And uh, we had a friendly uh, troop, a uh, member of the Army of Republic of Vietnam, who had been shot through both thighs and essentially exsanguinated. I asked the uh, young lieutenant, well, what kind of instruments do we have? And he said, well, we only have straight mosquitoes, Halstead type. And I said, wonderful, uh, what type of suture do we have? And he says, we only have six O eye silk. And I said, well, uh, this is where we start our contingencies and we'll make the best out of it. Uh, with his help, we were able to get the uh, two arteries uh, repaired uh, end to end and it was successful. What do you do when you get there and you don't have what you were used to and you don't have uh, what you expect? Uh, you know, you have to look for ways to uh, make do with what you do have, and that's one of the things we've taught subsequently at USIS. We were uh, put in what they called an inland enclave, and the concept in 1965 was that this enclave uh, in a circle would expand the circle and went over the hearts of the local people and uh, uh, take the territory in that manner. Uh, the tragedy was our circle really never expanded. We had a large uh, area called the golf course because it was a huge landing area and storage area with about 500 helicopters that belonged to the 1st Air Cavalry Division. And uh, that was uh, our little surgical uh, hospital was inside that circle supporting uh, them. Because of the uh, enemy, and there were North Vietnamese uh, regulars as well as Viet Cong all around us, they had what they called perimeter fire so that their various artillery pieces and rocket launchers would fire uh, every 30 seconds. I uh, did lose 60 or almost 60 pounds of weight in uh, my time in Vietnam, which speaks a little bit to uh, the uh, situation with food and so forth. We had anti-malarial uh, drugs uh, that we took. Uh, initially when we got there, there was also a feeling that we should uh, be protected against hepatitis C and we were given five uh, cc's of gamma globulin in each buttock uh, once a week until after about three weeks, nobody could walk without a lot of pain, so they stopped that. <laughs> I don't know what happened, nobody got hepatitis. We had all of, uh, said, the standard equipment these were well outfitted uh, surgical hospitals. We had all the suture types that you can imagine from wire to cat gut. Uh, we had uh, monofilament vascular proline uh, that we could use, so uh, we were very fortunate uh, there. Uh, we had electrocautery, which would work if our generators were working, and that was one of the big problems we had. Uh, the generators were down quite frequently, and when they were, then we had to rely on uh, gasoline lanterns, or we did what we had heard about in World War II, uh, hooking up the lights from a Jeep inside the operating room and running the Jeep with a light on when we needed that kind of light, and that worked fairly well. I was quite impressed. Dr. Rich was aware of Dr. DeBakey's vascular trauma work and the establishment of the MASH unit in World War II. He was also aware of Dr. Carl Hughes' creation of a registry of vascular trauma patients during the Korean War. Dr. Rich continued this work in Vietnam. Each vascular patient was assigned a consecutive number and was given a Vietnam vascular registry card. The card stated the two objectives of the vascular registry, to thoroughly document and analyze all blood vessel injuries in Vietnam 
and to provide long-term follow-up and results of vascular injuries and repairs. More than 10,000 vascular injuries are known to have been documented, including approximately 7,500 Americans. Certificates of recognition were given to more than 600 physicians and surgeons, as well as hundreds of medical personnel who contributed to the long-term follow-up of vascular injuries in Southeast Asia. The preliminary report from the Vietnam Vascular Registry was presented to the Society for Vascular Surgery in 1968. A variety of articles were subsequently published from the Vietnam Vascular Registry, and in 1978, the Vascular Trauma Textbook by Rich and Spencer was published, which included records from the Korean War. What came out of the Vietnam Vascular Registry and the distillation of that knowledge and disseminate, uh, the dissemination of that knowledge by Dr. Rich and others really forms the basis of how we care for those wounds today. So for example, if you have an injury to your superficial femoral artery, the way we take care of that wound or that injury is the same as what was established and developed out of the Vietnam Vascular Registry. One of the first comprehensive registries of any type of injuries within the history of medicine. What that's turned into now is the DOD Trauma Registry. The DOD Trauma Registry has over 60,000 patients uh, and really was established with the Vietnam Vascular Registry in mind and then the principles that were developed through the Vietnam Vascular Registry. That in and of itself has completely changed how we take care of every aspect of both civilian and military trauma patients. Dr. Rich returned to Walter Reed in 1966 and helped train the general surgeons heading to Vietnam, as well as the vascular fellows. Dr. Rich's research efforts at Walter Reed focused on lower extremity venous repair, which had been generally overlooked in the past. The second edition of Vascular Trauma was written and edited by Rich, Maddox, and Hirschberg and published in 2004. This edition added important data from civilian trauma centers to the military data. The Vascular Surgery Fellowship that was started at Walter Reed Army Hospital uh, in 1965 was, one of the, was the first uh, such training programs in, in modern day surgery dedicated to vascular disease and vascular injury. And uh, establishing that vascular fellowship uh, uh, really was the foundation for then uh, what became dozens and over now a hundred vascular surgery fellowships in the country, uh, which have positively impacted the readiness of surgeons, skill sets that are required uh, to manage uh, the uh, severely injured blood vessel to restore flow to an extremity or an end organ. The continued relevance of the Vietnam Vascular Registry and the two editions of vascular trauma cannot be overstated. As the number of U.S. casualties from the Afghanistan and Iraq wars increased, military surgeons had the benefit of counsel from senior mentors who had initiated these projects. The original registry-based studies from Balad, Iraq and Walter Reed were catalysts for the launch of the DOD's Applied Research, Development and Innovation Program in Hemorrhage Control, Resuscitation and Vascular Repair. The Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences was created by public law in 1972. Dr. Rich was appointed Professor of Surgery at the School of Medicine in 1976 and became the first chairman of the Department of Surgery in 1977. It gives me great pleasure to address our Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences and to welcome a distinguished audience to the annual Surgical Associates Day which was instituted by Chairman Norm Rich eight years ago. These meetings have paralleled the growth of this fine school. And this year, I want to thank Senator Goldwater for adding to the momentum by establishing a service award to be given to an outstanding Reserve Medical Corps officer who has actively supported the school's surgical mission. I wholeheartedly applaud the continued success of this group and the efforts of Jay Sanford and Norman Rich to make this all possible. The well-being of our country depends on all of you. Another legacy of the Vietnam Vascular Registry is the third edition of Vascular Trauma, 
by Rasmussen and Tai. Write it down, he would say. Don't, uh, uh, you know, write it down, use your performance improvement uh, processes, uh, begin a registry, record your experiences. Um, and, and it was his encouragement, really, at, and I remember, you know, just very specifically because of the challenging time that was in early 2005, his advice really, I think, helped us as a, as a new generation of surgeons start uh, the, the vascular registry that now um, uh, is part of the Department of Defense Trauma Registry, the, the Global War on Terrorism, or GWAT uh, vascular registry. Fundamentally, what Dr. Rich has taught me is the value of reaching behind you and pulling other people forward. There are selfish mentors, those that you know, basically work with someone, but really to their own ends or their own means. But truly what you want, and Dr. Rich uh, typifies that, is a selfless mentor. Someone who is truly invested as you, you as an individual uh, and your success. Dr. Rich's impact has been across the breadth of surgery. As both an educator and mentor, Dr. Rich has trained and guided 10 generations of surgeons. As a surgical investigator, he changed the management of vascular surgery. Dr. Rich has been instrumental in the formation of the partnership of the military health system with the American College of Surgeons and the reemergence of the Excelsior Surgical Society. Through these efforts, his legacy endures. Dr. Rich had the foresight to establish a small um, foundation grant to the college, realizing that, you know, that would be a key for future success. So the three of us met, and we realized, or we rediscovered, or we discussed, the fact that we have a shared ethos between the American College of Surgeons and military surgeons. In fact, many of, the, many of the surgeons that developed the college, led the college, were military surgeons. That discussion uh, resulted in a series of iterative meetings with the leadership between both organizations, American College of Surgeons, the military, other, member, other leaders in American surgery. Uh, and that you know, resulted in the partnership that has you know, three main focus areas. That's education and training systems, as in trauma systems, and quality. Uh, that partnership was formally signed in October of 2014. Among the 58,000 Americans killed or missing in action in the Vietnam War, 26 were physicians. It was a very sad uh, time in our nation's history. Uh, uh, probably only uh, second to the war between the states as far as division among families and friends and all that type of thing. So it was, uh, it was a bad scene and uh, 58,000 uh, casualties on the uh, Vietnam Memorial Wall. My family uh, certainly, uh, I say suffered, uh, they certainly uh, were extremely uh, loyal to me as a father and a husband. And, supportive of my career. Uh, my wife was not uh, a member of the medical profession and uh, she uh, had to bite her upper lip, uh, lower lip a number of times to, ex to try to ex understand what I was doing, but uh, she always supported me and uh, our uh, children the same way. Norman is grateful to his parents to his wife, Lois, of 58 years, to their four children with spouses, and to their nine grandchildren for their valuable support during his professional activities. A family reunion was held in 2013 in Honolulu. That was an excellent, excellent video. So I'd like to invite Dr. Rich to step up to the podium. And I'd like to invite anybody that wishes to discuss the video or make their own comments about the impact that Dr. Rich has had on your practice or the field of surgery or...
please introduce yourself, uh, where you're from, and uh, speak in loudly into the microphone. My name is uh, Lieutenant Commander Wallace, and uh, Dr. Rich, you won't remember me, but I remember you, and, and that's what matters. Um, when I was a young medical student, young ensign at the Uniformed Services University, Dr. Rich uh, sat me down and conveyed to me his love of surgery and uh, wrote me a letter of recommendation and uh, set me on my path uh, to become a surgeon. I'm going to be graduating from uh, Balboa and uh, heading out to the fleet. Uh, and I just want to thank you for everything and uh, you know, bestowing this gift of surgery upon me. Thank you very much. <laughs> In addition to thanking my uh, champion, uh, Captain Elster, may I uh, introduce my family who are here. My wife, Lois, please stand up for me. <laughs> Two daughters, Suzanne and Bethany. And our son, David, and his wife, Noel. Thank you very much. We uh, need family, as we all know, and in medicine, so often we're so busy that we uh, kind of overlook that. So our families are uh, champions for us, much like Elster's been for me this morning. Let me just say a couple of quick things, because there are two adages that I've uh, learned to use. Uh, one is that we stand on the shoulders of giants, and much like Dr. Elster said, the mentorship is so important that I certainly have benefited phenomenally over the years uh, from uh, the mentorship. And the other is that uh, no man is an island, and I didn't do any of this without an awful lot of support. So I thank a number of you here in the room and many who aren't here with us uh, for where I am today. Thank you very much. We would be <clears throat> remiss today if we didn't uh, as a civilian, but as a retired um, Army reservist who served overseas, to thank everybody here, past and present, for their service. It's what keeps us free. And so before we go on, I think we should just give everybody in the room uh, a round of applause, because we should never forget this is how we stay free. <laughs> Dr. Rich, I trained at Baylor in the 80s with Maddox, Feliciano, and DeBakey. And there wasn't a major vascular trauma that didn't go by where your name wasn't mentioned. And one of the reasons why we do the ICON sessions is so that our young surgeons and surgeons of the next and future generations will never forget who those giants were. And you were certainly one of them, and we will not let you be forgotten. So we would like to take uh, more comments from the floor. It's a, uh, a great and distinct honor to be here with Dr. Norman Rich. I first Please met introduce yourself. Juan Asensio, Creighton University, uh, and also a proud member of uh, the USU's faculty. Uh, I, met for, I first met Dr. Rich when I was a fellow at Parkland through my uh, chair, Will Fry. But before that, I had heard a lot when I was a medical student as well at, at Rush and at Cook County, and as well as in Northwestern, from people that actually participated with Dr. Rich in the Vietnam Vascular Registry. So I first heard about him from uh, Dr. Sit Levitsky, who was a very good cardiac surgeon at Illinois and at Rush. And then from uh, two uh, of my great mentors in vascular surgery, Dr. Uh, John Bergen and Jimmy Yao. Now, they were not the a great, uh, they were not so much oriented towards vascular surgery, but I was also mentored by two individuals who were participants in the Vietnam Vascular Registry who were my professors, Julius Kahn and Otto Triple. Those are the aortic right. group compressor individuals. So subsequently, any time that I have been as a young visiting professor now to 89 countries, everywhere that I have been, there has not been a single country where people do not ask about where is Norman Rich. As an advisor to the Colombian, Turkish, Spanish, and Mexican militaries, he is uniformly revered everywhere, from Japan, from, from Australia, everywhere. Where is Norman Rich? One of my favorite anecdotes about Norm is the fact that he came as a visiting professor when I was at the University of Southern California 
uh, working for Dr. Demeester. And so we were sitting together, and if you've ever worked for doc Dr. Demeester, you would know exactly what kind of department he ran. So I get a call from my oldest son, and uh, who happened to be at the University of Arizona. It just so happens that he happened to be a fraternity brother of Dr. Rich. They were both Fiji's, Phi Gamma Delta. So all of a sudden, Norman is sitting, I'm sitting next to him, and he hears about this, and he says, oh, let me speak with your son. So in the middle of this great, fabulous dinner at the Ritz-Carlton, he went to talk to his fraternity brother. So as a result of that, pictures hang of Norman Rich, and he is an icon in the Fiji fraternity nationally. Many years ago, he said, I want to make sure that you continue with vascular injury management. So not only was he nice enough to have provided me with a lot of advice, especially when a number of us put together the first joint training trauma center that went to Baylor, and eventually we had the Navy brought to LA County and the Army, of which I work with, at, um, at the University of Miami. So he sends me a picture, an original picture, with the original faculty, Dr. Charles Robb, Dr. Harris Schumacher, in a wonderful Hispanic icon, Dr. Juan Lionel Villavicencio. He speaks Spanish fluently, and he is virtually revered. Uh, he is known, everybody that he has known, he is, I mean, he just knows everybody. And one of my fondest stories is being able to sit with him and one of his partners, George Lavinson, who was an adjunct faculty at USC, who made major, major contributions. I have quoted his works, he has quoted, in his great registry of great study, uh, studies in the second edition, uh, a number of our contributions. And many years ago, Will Fry gave me a copy, my chair at Parkland, University of Texas Southwestern, a copy of his uh, original uh, book, which he signed. And then subsequently, I have another two other copies that people have been sending to me. And uh, to me, I cannot tell you, I don't use the word hero, uh, for those of you who were in Vietnam, you may know something, and eventually this will come out, about what uh, Mr. McNamara did, uh, which was called Project 100,000, or McNamara's Morons, in which he got all the poor kids, African Americans, Hispanics, all the poor kids from many rural areas. Eventually that'll come out. But I know for a fact that Norm operated a many of those, and he is an icon to the people of the 1st Air Cavalry, particularly of the Ninth Cavalry. So Norm, you are indeed a true hero for many of us. God bless you. May you be around forever to mentor Thank us. You, Thank you. Thank you very much. Don. My name is Don Nakayama. I'm uh, with uh, Florida International University as an adjunct professor. And I, uh, my introduction to Norman Rich is uh, he's really my mentor in, uh, in organized surgical history and a lot of the success that we have in the surgical history group as a result of uh, Norman's guidance. And I always ask him for his counsel. He's always given me uh, his opinion in, 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 in very, a uh, very generous manner. And I'd like, just like to thank Norman. So thank you, Norman. Thank you, Don. <laughs> Microphone number two. Yeah, I'm Jim Coffey. I'm from Reading, Pennsylvania, also known as Walter Reed of the North. Norm, one of the things that wasn't uh, brought out in the uh, speech or the tape as what as nice as it was was that the legions of surgeons who have been trained by you or by your trainers uh, in the how many years is it in the in the fellowship 50 some odd now yes um, if you look back of, of which I have, am a graduate of the general surgery and the uh, Walter Reed vascular fellowship program all of those graduates who have gone on to be program directors or staff at teaching programs, and all of the graduates of USIS who have taken care of our brothers and sisters in arms, who have now gone on to teach the legions of surgeons that owe their training, their professional lives, and how good we all to your work. And that I say thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Norman. A few last words. The reason I hesitate is that I thought I gave a few last words <laughs> already. No, 
Thank you all very much. I'm uh, very honored, as I said. Uh, no man is an island, and I feel very privileged as a physician, as a surgeon, to have so many good friends and so many good supporters. Thank you very much.